This is Sports Talk with Player Agent 3, my next guest. Many people know him as Chuck Wagon, Chuck Diesel, <laughs> Corn Dog. Corn Dog. <laughs> North Carolina legend. I'm going to say it, yeah, North Carolina legend. Southern Wayne, uh, uh, Southern Wayne to be exact. Mr. Chuck Cornegate, how you doing? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> glad to have you on the show, man. Definitely glad to um, have you on the show. Um, you know, how, how, how things been, been with you? Yeah, man, it's, it's just been going pretty good. You know, since I retired, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride. Uh -huh. Just trying to stay up with um, in the world of athletics. You know what I mean? It's just this thing and it's that thing. And it's, you know, you just never know where it's going to take you. You know, the one thing I've I've learned so far being, you know, in the um, field of athletics, you know, not being a player, it's just you just never know what opportunity lies around the corner mm -hmm. and where your life, you know, what what might take you where you might be coaching. All of a sudden you might not be coaching there no more. You might get another offer. You might get let go. You might be in this field. Two years ago, I was an athletic director. And wow. high school, that was going good, you know, and then, you know, I'm working at, you know, co-founder of a gym now. And, um, okay. you know, it's just so many different opportunities when it comes to athletics. And it's fun, though. It's just kind of like, you know, I like I like the ride up. Yeah, you know, uh, I remember, man, growing up in the Triangle area myself, I remember back in my high school days, Basketball-wise, in in the state of North Carolina, all you would hear, um, you would hear the, uh, the the Jerry Stackhouses, the the Jeff McInnes, um, and, and then you would hear this guy named Ch Chuck Cornegate. Mm -hmm. Talk talk about talk about those those those, those high school days. Man, I, I don't know if I'm biased, <laughs> and I don't I don't want to sound like one of these old heads that just feel like you know basketball was it back in the day, but. It was it was crazy, man. Yeah. Like my starting lineup in middle school was six five. Six my point guard was six four. My two wings were six two. We were all dunking. I mean, it was just like, you know, we would have um high school players to come down to our middle school games even college players i mean we was and forget about it when we got to high school you know guys like rodney rogers and you know jamie watson yeah um just um octavius barnes mm -hmm. kid from wilson i mean we just had it, it was people flying around everywhere you know it, you yeah. just you know jarvis lang yeah yeah you know so you know, it, it was crazy back then, and um, yeah, I, I, I just don't see the same athleticism like 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 it used to be. Kids are no, kids are way more skilled. I will say that. Yes. Some of the stuff they they are doing with the basketball now, mm -hmm. like some of these these dribble moves. I'm trying to teach my son just basic basketball moves. He's like, "Yo, what is this?" Like, you know, I want to learn the sidestep. You know, this and that, whatever. I'm like, "Yo, we weren't doing that back in the day." Like, you know. <laughs> So it's it's a different level of skill nowadays, but I think the fundamentals and some of the athleticism from back in the day, you know, it, it was was better back then. But but what they can do with the ball nowadays, and you know, some of the some of the the way they're shooting it from like God knows half court now, like it's nothing, you know. Which, some of that stuff is amazing. So I'm not gonna take away from what these kids are doing today because they can do some stuff we definitely couldn't do all right but yeah. um when you when you talking about staying on you, you know your high school your high school days you played at uh southern wayne high school um when you think about your high school career in in some of your contemporaries such as a jerry stackhouse uh a jeff mcginnis um and, and some of the other players why didn't you leave for the Oak Hills or the, or the Hargrave uh, Military Academy? Because, I mean, you were heavily recruited in high school. <laughs> I didn't have to. Uh, Staghouse didn't have to. Jeff McGinnis right. didn't have to. 
That was a personal choice for those guys. Stackhouse would have went to Carolina whether he he could have went anywhere. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't remember if I was even offered like those guys, like I was about two years older than, no, I was a year older than Stackhouse and those guys. So they were on some different stuff, you know, they, 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 I know it was just one year apart, but when I came through, those guys a year later, they were offered a lot of things that that weren't available to me at that time. I don't know why. Um, I don't know if it, if it was another level of, I don't know. I, I, I don't even remember being offered that to, to turn it down. Um, I was happy to stay where I was. You know, we were pretty competitive. Um, I knew I was getting recruited. You know, Dean Smith, Coach K, all them cats was, you know, they were at the games. I mean, I, I didn't feel like I had to go anywhere. I wasn't hungry to go to leave Southern Wayne. Um, you know, I love my coach. I love my teammates. And, you know, I felt like I could, it, it wouldn't have made any difference to me going anyway. But I really don't really remember being offered, you know, to go to these. I didn't know much about it. I was kind of sheltered. I, my mom and dad weren't sports people. And um, I didn't have a lot of people around me that could really, open my eyes to different opportunities. I just went out of balls, you know, and I try to be different with my son. You know, I got a lot of, I kind of know how the game is, game goes. So I'm able to talk to my son about all this stuff now. But back then I, I really didn't have anybody around me who had been through it to kind of just make me aware of these situations. Like, like you know, these cats is going to, you know, I'm sure Jerry, they had, he probably had some people around him be like, yo, you can go here and get even more exposure. Yeah. And maybe with those cat, those other cats too, I didn't have that. Now back, back in those, those, <laughs> that, that was like the beginning of the, the, the AAU scene. That was uh, 93, 92, 93, around that time, that was when AAU had like really just started to pop off. You had teams mm -hmm. like the Raleigh Stars, um, the, the the Royals in, in Charlotte, uh, the Sonic. Yeah. What what was AAU like for you coming up? It was kind of non-existent. I mean, like I said, once again, I'm from Dudley, North Carolina. Um, and we didn't, that's the first time I met Stackhouse um, when I got recruited to play for the, the Raleigh team, the Royals, like not the Royals, but the, the Titans, I guess we were. And um, I signed on and, you know, all of a sudden this coach, my mom and dad couldn't take me to those practices up in Raleigh. So the coach was like, yo, I'll come get you. So I hop in the car, get let out of school early that day. I get in the car and I'm in the car with Stackhouse. I had never seen this cat before. Well, actually I did know Stackhouse because I played against him in the Jamboree one year, like six months earlier. So I kind of just knew who he was. So we were in the car together and the coach took us up to Raleigh. Um, so I played about half that schedule. I couldn't commit to it. Like my parents weren't in the position to, you know, help out. They work all the time and, you know, so I played about half the game. We totally dominated. It was fun. I got to know Stack and um, Lavelle and, you know, all those cats. Um, so it was, a, it was a good time. But, you know, I played probably 10, like five or 10 games. So AU wasn't really big it, in, in my influence. I didn't have a lot of AU, like, experience. I, I, I was just, you know, more loyal to my high school team back, back in the day. Right. Um, so that AU influence was kind of something extra. It was fun, but it, it didn't, you know, it didn't make or break me at all, you know, which is different now. Being a guy that was heavily recruited out of high school, what went into your decision to, to sign at NC State? <laughs> all the wrong stuff, my man, all the wrong <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I had a girlfriend that I didn't want to leave. I got I got um, Billy Donovan, Rick Pitino, them cats calling me from Kentucky, and I'm just like, like yo man, I can't even wash clothes. I'm not going out to freaking Kentucky. Uh -huh. Like uh, my girls here, you know all yo. Like I said, dog, 
I had nobody like in my corner, like really telling me what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm just thinking about it. So I got duped and I still tell people this story to the day and they, they, yo, cats be like, want to smack me. I'm like, Tommy Amaker called me from the final four when they were about to play against, um, I don't know who they were playing against that year. Was it UNLV? I'm sitting in front of the TV about to watch the game. Phone ring, here come cop Tommy Emmerich calling me. Uh-huh. I'm like, yo, man, you supposed to be getting ready for the game. Why is you calling me? He said, yo, just want to let you know we, we thinking about you. This team would be complete if we had a guy like you in the fold, this and that, blah, blah, blah. blah. I'm just like, you know, so they were like, dog, you could have went to Duke. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. I was I was afraid to go somewhere like Duke because I was under the assumption that the the, the academics were just like like yeah. like because I was a career C student. You know what I mean? I just <laughs> I just I slid by. You know, so I was like, I can't go to Duke. You know, not knowing that Duke was like probably easier than going somewhere like NC State you know academically because they make sure you're good you know and that's part of what happened to me when i got to nc state you know i got there and i was just like i wasn't good you know i had nobody really you know as far as the resources went to making sure we got our work done wasn't there (laughs) but the reason i went to state was you know the playing time i was like okay i come in the door you know I'm, i'm gonna start you know, I did like the coaching staff. Uh, I had a good relationship with the assistant coach. Um, and, and 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 one thing that did do it because I took the SAT about I took the SAT about five times between the time I was tenth grade to the to the time I was a senior, and I didn't I wasn't doing good on it. Mm-hmm. So several teams dropped dropped off me. Um, well, they didn't drop off, but they kind of fell back. Mm-hmm. Carolina fell back. Um, Duke fell back. You guys like that kind of fell back. So I felt a certain type of way. Um, State was just like, yo, man, whether you prop 48, that's when prop 48 was a thing. Exactly, yeah. And they was like, yo, whether you prop 48 or not, we want you. Mm-hmm. Wait for us, same thing. Wait for us was like, yo, whether you prop 48 or not, we want you. Maryland the same way. And those were the three teams that I came down to at the end. I was just like, you know, I'm rocking with one of those cats. And then finally, when I passed that, le- you know, last time I took the SAT and I passed it, you know, I wasn't even letting them other cats back in the door that had fell back. I was just like, screw that. You know, don't don't jump back on me now because you see I'm not going to be a prop 48. So I said, either I'm going to stay or I'm going to Maryland, or I'm going to Wake Forest. What What was it like for you, man? Um, being a, a North Carolina kid, the first time you stepped foot in Cameron Indoor Stadium, the first time you, you stepped foot in the Dean Dome with the Wolfpack jersey on as a freshman. I never, ma- I never made it. Really? I never made it. <laughs> yeah, I, I never made it. I was ineligible before those games. Wow. I, Never knew that. Yeah. Never knew that. I I played because I didn't even make it past the first semester. I had a 1.9 mm-hmm. of a 2.0. And NC State rules, not ACC rule, not a not a NCAA rule. NC State had a rule because of all the Jimmy V stuff. And they were like, yo, you got to come in here. And from the first semester out, you got to be at a 2.0. Don't you not plan and that's what I was going back to what I was saying about Duke. I was like, so you mean to tell me if I'd have went to Duke, I could have still been playing? And it just the way it was. So I played a preseason schedule. I played the schedule. I played against guys like um, Iowa State. We went out to Kansas and played. So we played some big time teams. We played UConn. I played a I played the typical, you know, preseason schedule. But right before my first game against UNC, I couldn't play because I wow. killed it. Never I knew did that. Everything. Yeah. And I couldn't play in that game. It was heartbreaking. You know, I was at the game. I was like, yo, these are the games I wanted to play. The ACC schedule. Couldn't play. Mm-hmm. 
So you leave, you leave NC State after your freshman year and you you transfer to Villanova, the Big East. Uh, what was what was behind that move? I mean, so far away. I mean, you know, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of other schools close to uh, your home, but you go up north to the Big East. What was behind that move? Hey, dude, I had no idea. Like I said, so I, I finished out the year at NC State. Um, you know, my grades weren't getting any better. I just wasn't getting the help that I needed, you know, throughout that second semester, you know, and, you know, when I was supposed to be recovering my grades and then maybe trying to get back to playing the next season. And I'm just like, dude, I'm going backwards. Like, you know, I, this is this is not good. So that summer, I went to summer school and I think I bombed a class in the summertime too. And I was just like, you know what, I, I gotta leave, you know? So I took that next fall off going to the end of 93. I took the fall off and I just said, I'm gonna just visit some schools. And, I, you know, I didn't know the, you know, I was looking at my credits and stuff. I was like, yo, I'm pretty jacked up. So I'm, I'm looking at black colleges. You know, I'll take a visit to, you know, I'm just like, to be sure, you know, my grades aren't in the situation to where I could go back to another, you know, situation that I was in. So I'm taking visits to like Elizabeth City State. I go to the Virginia Union. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm just like, you know, I'm just gonna have to go somewhere in the fall and just, so I go up to Elizabeth City State and my man, Alfred Johnson up there, who I'm still dear friends with today. He coaches, he's a guy, a Philly guy. And he's from, um, he was coaching at Elizabeth City State. Um, he's up in Vermont now coaching. Like I said, me and him is still dear friends. Um, I went up there on a visit and he looking at me, he was like, yo dog, you up here Elizabeth, what, what are you doing here? Like, I hope you come here, but so as soon as he felt like they weren't gonna get me, he called up to Paul Hewitt up at Villanova, you know, cause those are Philly guys. Yeah. He said, yo, there's this cat out here, man. He he got no business trying to go to a, like a black school or, you know, a division two. It was, it was Elizabeth, that was a division two back then. Yeah, still division, division two, yeah. right? Yeah, still. yeah, and he was like, you need, to, you need to grab this guy. Like, you know, he's lost. You know, he he needs to, you know, he needs some direction. So and this is about probably November. You know, I take that whole fall and just go, you know. And um, so Paul Hewitt called me um, from Villanova. And I'm like, I don't know what y'all calling me for. My grades are jacked up. Like, I don't know what y'all could do for me right now. But, I, you know, I'd love to come up with a visit. So they investigate my situation and they were like, yo, we can help you. You know, we're a private institution. You'd have to graduate in three years, but we could get you on a schedule and we could we could make it so you, you graduate and your credits would transfer. So I, I visited, I, I visit, I visited Providence before too, before that I, I took a visit up to Providence. Rick Barnes got in the fold. Mm -hmm. um, I, I took a visit up to Villanova and I just loved it. When I went up to Villanova, the, the main thing they told me, they said, look, man, we're going to make sure you graduate. Like, no way. The, like he looked at my, the coaches looked at my parents said, and they 100 percent guaranteed that I would graduate from there. They said we have a 100 percent graduation rate amongst our basketball players for the last, you know, how far we can look back. He's going to graduate. Okay. So that really sold me right there. And them cats up there, man, they were serious about basketball. That team, they they didn't joke around. They were taking it serious. And, um, you know, they, they they had a talented bunch. You know, I, I thought I'd fit in. I thought I could be like the, the missing piece to that puzzle up there. So I went for it. So, so you went from one premier conference, the ACC, to another the, with the Big East, year in and year out, two of the premier conferences in, in, in America. Um, you played on a couple of uh, nationally ranked teams at Villanova, and you got a chance to play in Madison Square Garden um, during the, uh, the, the the Big East tournament and, and probably when you guys played uh, um, Syracuse. What was it like, man, to, 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 to play on that stage? Yeah, St. John's too. St. John's. John's. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, for, I forgot about St. John's. 
Yeah. Yeah, all their home games was at Madison yeah. Square Garden. Um, so I was there at Madison Square Garden still to me today is just like it's like the sec- that was like our second well no Wells Fargo down in Philly. We play yeah. a portion of our games there. But other than that, we were always at Madison Square Garden. It, it was like no big deal to us. Mm-hmm. Um but it it was nice, man. It, it, it I don't know. It just feels different playing up there. Um, there in the Carrier Dome was awesome, but Madison Square Garden, just being in that atmosphere up in New York, you know, it, it's it's magical. And um, so us winning the Big East Championship up there in ninety ninety five, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty special. Um, so yeah, we we played up there at least four or five times a year, maybe even more, considering the Big East tournament. And it's a shame that they don't play up there anymore. Um, the Big East mm-hmm. tournament is somewhere else. But yeah, that that was that was definitely one of the highlights of, and one of the draws of me going to the Big East is, is um, being able to play there and being a part of that that atmosphere. And, and being that you went through what what you went through at NC State, then you go to the Big East. You go you go to um, to Villanova. What what do you what was your moment where you your welcome to the Big East moment where you felt like man I I, I made it. Well, um, <laughs> there. I don't know, you know, obviously I had to sit out a year. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm in that joint, like, you know, in practice every day. First we won the NIT tournament. And that was me just being in practice like a savage every freaking day, just like on the practice squad, just trying to kill everybody. And um, so when it was my year to play, I had to sit out that whole year. Yeah, I come out of the joint like you know you had just let old Yeller out of the out of the, the, the dog pit. I just was like just a hundred miles per hour. Um, hold on, let me pull up my better. All right, yeah, and um, there was this game we had against Syracuse. Um, I guess it was ninety back in ninety four. I was playing against John Wallace, Lawrence Moten, and all those guys. And I think I probably had one of my better games. I, I probably had about 19, between 19 and 22 or something. And um, you had Bill Rafferty there. You had, yeah. you know, all the John, Bill Walton there announcing the games. I mean, it was after that game, I had cats calling me from, you know, because the game was televised. And Bill Rafferty, I dumped on John Wallace so hard. My man, Bill Rafferty was like, Chuck will make you duck. <laughs> and so my dogs from the from the crib, as soon as I got back to the room, they was like, yo, man, you killed it tonight. You was on TV, this and that, Bill Rafferty, you know, he was on your joint, like, you know, this and that. And I guess then after that game against Syracuse, like I, I felt like, you know, like, yo, know, this is this is pretty awesome. And, you know, this is this is Big East basketball. Like, you know, this is, you know. But I guess that was like my moment. I kind of, I kind of look back on after that game. Okay. Um, so you know, once you were done at uh, Villanova, you had the opportunity to play uh, professionally overseas. You also played. Uh, I think back then it was the uh, the CBA. Um, well, it was one of those type of minor leagues. Talk about your um, professional career playing um, playing overseas. <laughs> Uh, man, that that um, first I start off with the Raleigh Cougars. That was um, yeah. That's not even the CBA. That was um, you. Was that USBL? USB. Yeah, something like that. I remember, did you guys play yeah. in the Dorton Arena? Dorton Arena. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh because that was the most fun team I think I've ever played with. You know, my man Jeremy Hyatt, Larry Davis. Played Tyrone Hopkins on uh, my man Dillard from um, Arkansas, um, and we just busted everywhere. And it was like we were the barnstormers. We we go busted down to Florida. We played Nate Higgs, and um, that's when I kind of got my my scoring sc- swagger back a little bit because at Villanova, by the end of my career, Villanova probably the reason I didn't get drafted is because they kind of just. I was like fourth option. 
you know, and I kind of lost a lot of offensive confidence. And, you know, the coach at the time at USBL, he, he, you know, he was giving me the ball like, yo, you got score, 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 score. So I kind of, that was an important team for me because I kind of got my feel back for um, scoring the basketball. And then um, I went from there, and then I went to Wizards. You know, I, well, I got drafted CBA by the Yakima, um, the Yakima team out in um, Washington State. I didn't want, I never wanted to play UFBL. I, I don't know why. I just, I kind of just was like, nah, I'm not going there. So I went to the Wizards. They had interest in hired me. Um, he said, yo, we got a chance for you to, you know, go to Wizards Vet Camp. Took that momentum from USBL. I played really strong in that um, in that vet camp with the Wizards. Um, C Webb and all those cats were there. Um, did a really good job, but you know, I got cut the last day um, before opening day, um, which kind of like messed me up too because. I was telling the agent I had at the time, I was like, listen, I don't think I can make this team because they've got like five power forwards on this team. Ben Wallace, C. Webb, Juwan Howard, um, Lorenzo Williams, Har Harvey Grant. I was like, I'm going to make this team, you know? And so I was kind of pissed off at that situation because I felt like I get, gave a good enough effort to make, make the league. Um, so then I left there. And that was in October when I got let go. Uh, when does the NBA season start? September, probably October. Yeah. So it wasn't really nowhere to go. And I hired a new agent and he was like, listen, if you just want to go ball, they ain't much money, but you go down to Australia. Because their season started in, um, in Dece no, yeah, December or January. Mm -hmm. So I went down there. And I absolutely killed it down. I was like, I had a big chip on my shoulder. Um, I absolutely killed it down down there because I was just trying to get in and out. So as soon as I left from down there, after six months later, I got a I got a um, job opportunity in the first division in um, Spain. And those hard those jobs are hard to get. Yeah. And um, but every time I had a game in Australia, that's when the videotapes was out. Um, VHS. Mm -hmm. I would go to the office and get the VHS tape of the game and I send it to my agent. I'm like, listen, give me, you know, we trying to be in and out of here. So he would forward those tapes, you know, to those representatives over in um, Spain. And two weeks after I was done, I got a job offer in Seville. Um, so I went over to Spain, um, ACB, first league in Spain. It's killer. You know, I've seen cats over there doing some stuff that you know, I was like, this is just as good as the NBA, just about. So I started off in Seville and I played over there 10 years. Okay. But Chuck, you also, um, you played in the Euro League, man. And I know the Euro League, man, the fans are, 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 are I'm well, not going to say yeah. that over the top, but talk about, you know, your experience playing in the Euro League. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, I, I went to Spain, but well, the first team I did that I played for didn't play in the Euro Cup. It was when I left Seville and went to Malaga, and that was a very that was a, that was one of the top teams in Spain, and they also played in the Euro League, um, which you know the Euro Cup is like in the middle of the week, and you play your um, Spanish league games on the weekend. So yeah. that was just another level. Um, that was fun, man. We played like those teams in Moscow and Italy and like, you know, during the week we're flying to other countries to play against the best of the best, you know, guys that, you know, in Russia, like, you know, J.R. Holden was over there a bunch of years, Marcus Brown, those cats, you know, uh, we go to, out to Turkey, um, we play against FS and, um, um, What's the other big team in um, Greece? Olympiacos. Olympiacos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The now that that was big time. I was like, okay, this this is some real, <laughs> yeah. real ball here. But them jokers over there crazy. Like <laughs> when we played at Panathinaikos, we had a hockey 
shield. Like, you know, you go to a hockey game and you got that glass shield over the bench. Yeah. And I was just like, why, why are we enclosed in? Like, why are we closed in like that? So halfway through the game, I looked back at the shield. All you saw was spit all over the back of it. They ah. trying to spit on us. They um, throwing, they lighting up nickels with lighters, throwing them at us. I mean, they were, those fans over there, I guess because of the soccer influence and how competitive the soccer is over there, they tend to lose their damn mind anywhere. <laughs> anytime they get to go somewhere to cheer for somebody, they just, it, it's unbelievable. Spanish, Spanish fans weren't like that. They were more civil, civilized. But when you went to Greece and um, 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 like Tel Aviv or them places over there, man, they you might get beat the hell up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, over there, they 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 were on another level. Uh, <laughs> it was fun at the same time, though. It, it makes for a good story. When you look at your uh, look at your, you, you think back on your career, your, your your size six foot nine, and you look at today's basketball players who are six foot nine, they're pretty much guards, right? And they're making um, enormous it's amount of money. Do you do you think do you think to yourself like man, if I had you know the skill set that the guys have now back then, it'd be over. Well, I I come out right in the wrong time, right? <laughs> because yeah. back then really was the craze. If you were about six nine ish, you had to be a guard. I mean, you looking at guys, I can't remember. You know, that's just what it was. They were like, you ain't big enough to be a big. See, I almost think now I would have been better off because you see guys like, it's almost trending in the other direction now where you got like guys like Draymond Green, you got like smaller guys, about 6'10-ish, 6'9", cause I'm really about 6'9 and a half, like pushing 6'10". But I never, I should have always said I was 6'10". I don't know what the hell I was thinking about. I, I'm just like, you know, my brother used to always tell me, yo, you got to say you're 6'10". But, um, but now it seems like the game is faster. Um, and a lot of the big 7 foot, 6'11", 7'1", guys are almost being phased out. It seems like mm -hmm. a lot of teams are playing with five guys that are around 6'10 and under. And they're just running. I mean, you look at, like I said, you look at guys like Draymond Green, you look at Bam out in like Miami, and you're looking at like a Boston Celtics team, they really don't have, you know, they don't bog down, bog themselves down with a bunch of size. They they are almost playing, I think Al Horford, what is he, 6'10 or something like that. So it's almost like I would have had a better chance now, you know, being 6'9 and a half, almost 6'10 you know, playing a bigger position than I played in college. Cause I, I played the position that don't even exist no more in college, which is the power forward. Right, right. Like that ain't, that yeah. don't even exist is, no more. Right. There ain't no more power forward. If you a power forward, you might as well be a center. Right. Like they're, they're, you're a center. I might as well have been a center, which I always had good ball handling skills, like a pass. You know, my jump shot came along when I got to Europe because I was forced to shoot the ball over Europe. But I was kind of like a Draymond Green, more like a Tristan Thompson style player. And Tristan Thompson is like the same player I was, mm -hmm. you know, and they would have looked at him the exact same way back then when those 6'9 guys or 6'10 guys, they, you know, the league was just going crazy for those guys being guards, like Kobe coming out. I mean, you know, those guys, I mean, Kobe's 6'7", on well, 6'9", but, you know, McGrady, I mean, you know, and Tim Thomas, who was a teammate of mine that was 6'10", you know, it, it, they just almost took it overboard. Like, you can't be 6'9", or 6'10", and play inside no more. Like, I'm like, well, what do you want your centers to be? Like, 7'3"? Like, you know what I'm saying? If your guard six nine, like where did where where does it stop? So they kind of went over, overboard with it, and I think since then it's kind of almost come back around to where they're like, okay, you can be six nine, even six. I was Draymond Green six eight. Ben Wallace 
which back then he he should have proved it. Ben Wallace was shorter than I was back when I we were with the Wizards together. This cat was six eight, and nobody gave him a damn chance until he finally got to Detroit, and they really or when he went down to Orlando, and he proved he was like you know we can play this way, and um, but yeah, so I think now I would have I would have been in a lot better situation than I would have been than I was in back then because the the only reason I feel like I just wasn't drafted is because they they really were just on that stuff back then like yo six nine guard like you know you gotta be a guard a couple more things Chuck before I let you get get out of here man I, I cannot let you get out of here before I ask you about um today man um this thing with uh and I, and I'm sure you've seen it with uh, Scotty Pippen um, in the last dance and, 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 you know, he's coming out with a book. Um, I think the title of the book is Unguarded. And, uh, you know, he really came at uh, Michael Jordan. Um, you know, he had, he had a lot of negative, negative things about Michael Jordan. And we both, you know, grew up in that, um, that Jordan and Pippen era. Um, wh when you see, when you see that, what, what, what comes to mind when you see uh, Scotty Pippen, um, Doing that MJ like he like like he did. <laughs> it's hard for me to speak on it because I, you just don't know what they went through. Um, watching the last dance, they did make Scotty look jacked up in that whole thing. I mean, Scotty Scotty looked bad. So I'm I'm not even mad that Scotty probably took that whole last dance situation the way he did because they really made him look weak in, in that whole, they made him look like a real country boy. And like that came into the league, he didn't know how to manage his money. He didn't, you know, he took a bull crap contract. You know, he wouldn't go into the game, you know, when they won the game with cool coach, or whatever, made him look selfish and weak when he, you know, set out with it. I don't know. I, I think I think they did him dirty on the series. You know, I, I think, you know, I don't know if that's really how it was. I mean, if it Scotty was really like that, fine, but you know, Mike didn't do him no favors. Um, I just don't like I hate to see it, but I think Scotty's standing up for himself. I, I don't mind it, you know. I mean the way they made him look on Last Dance, you know, it. I I, I feel like he's just now on the defensive where he feels like he's got to kind of, you know, gain some kind of respect back or at least speak what he feels like to be true. Okay. Carlisle Complete 7, is that how you pronounce it? Yep. Talk about that, um, this new venture that you guys, um, you and a couple of uh, other former um college basketball players um, workout facility that you guys have right right now. Um, talk about talk about that in your in the vision with that um, with that whole program. Well um, first of all the program is great. Um, it's, it's different from anything I've ever seen. Um, it's, it's, it's we all once we saw the workout, we were just all blown away to the point where we were just like, we gotta, we gotta turn as many athletes onto this as, as possible, as, as humanly possible, um, and try to execute it the right way. Um, it's, 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 it's all about core, um, and you know, the guy that designed the workout, you know, he played college ball. And part of the reason why things didn't work out for him on the division one level is because when he got to college, they tried to change his body. They wanted to, you know, put him, which, you know, a lot of lifting heavy weights is, you know, good for a lot of people, but for like guards and, you know, kind of, you know, some ball players, just like AI and guys that I played with um, in college, Alvin Williams, those kids, those guys didn't lift weights because they would have thrown off their whole shot. Um, and, you know, but bigger guys like me, I lifted, you know, and it was it was good for my game. Um, but this program is meant to be a complement to, to lifting. It's supposed to keep your muscles um, 
elongated. Like you don't want to just bulk up to the point as a basketball, as a skilled player, you don't want to bulk up to the to the point that you're just just really tight and whatever. You want to stay loose and limber, keep those muscles strong, but like, you know, with the elasticity in it. So um, what we do is a lot of um, it's just speed and agility, you know, and explosion and stuff. And we don't use the typical um, weight machines. You know, it's based all around the guys, um, Randy Carlisle, who invented the program. That's why it's called Carlisle's Complete Seven. Um, he um, he had this vision just based off around using tires and, you know, and a lot of aerobic work and a lot of um, stuff based around these tires. And, um, you know, he and the, he was just so protective of it that I, I didn't even see the program until, you know, I started working for him because, you know, he's he didn't want anybody trying to take it. So, you know, it took me a while to see it. But once I saw it, I was like, dang, that's that's serious, you know, and um, and to the point where younger kids can get involved, too, because you don't want a lot of younger kids lifting heavy weights and stuff. So with this, the benefit of this is you can bring in kids um, from the third grade on and get them to start sculpting their bodies a little bit the word they're not you know putting themselves in danger of doing squats and like doing a lot of heavy weights there we're just in there doing core strength um getting your footwork like a lot of stuff that we aerobic stuff that we do is meant to speed up your footwork and build explosion increasing um your vertical jump so those are the things we focus on um and um and it's good for kids, like I said, kids, any kids from third grade all the way up until pro athletes, you know, it's, it's a great workout. And we all believe in it and we're excited about it and we're just ready to, you know, get get the word out, you know, and get people coming in the door. We have about, we got about 98% buy-in. Every, everybody who's walked through the door that has done the workout um has signed up for a month membership you know and you know once they see it they're like dang you know this is exactly what the kids have been missing because there's nothing quite out there like that which addresses that part of the body quite like this does you know like i said it's not meant to rule out weights uh, but it's meant to complement it and um you know and there's not a kid out there in any sport that couldn't benefit from, you know, jumping a little bit higher, having quicker feet and being able to, you know, open those hips up and being able to, to be a little more agile. So, you know, we're excited about it. And we, we you know, once people see it, the, the proof is in the work, you know, once people come out and see it, you know, everybody's has been sold. So we're pleased with the results so far and we're pleased with the feedback that we're getting from, from people who have um, come out and tried it. And so we're just going from there, man. We're just working on marketing it and letting people know where we are and, you know, how to get involved, how to sign up and all that, you know, technical stuff. But, you know, we have no doubt that, you know, it's going to be successful because the proof is, proof is in the work, you know. It's not, it's not by no means a scam to try to get people out there and just do the same old boring workout it's quite the opposite it's just like you know just come and just look at it it's not even nothing i'm not a salesperson you know just come see the work and you'll you'll be sold what's next for chuck uh, for chuck carnegie well you know me i'm i'm my main focus now is working you know i got my um i got two boys and a girl both my boys all of them are interested in athletics my my 14 year old is now ninth grade um probably gonna play has a good chance to play varsity basketball um my girl plays volleyball she's 13 and my youngest boy he play he's a baseball player but he does mess around with some basketball football but he's a baseball player so What's really my focus just now, man, is just ready for my kids. You know what I'm saying? And, and just, and, and giving them, I, I told you earlier, man, I didn't have anybody in my corner 
you know, growing up that could really give me the kind of advice I could have made better decisions. So I'm just trying to be that for them. You know what I'm saying? As they look to go to college and make different decisions, um, I, I just want to be there to make sure they make the, the correct choices. And um, then they're, you know, sports. I, I hope they all play sports because, you know, that's what got me through and it's a big benefit to me. There's nothing wrong with, you know, wanting your kids to play sports. I mean, sports is a big business, whether you're playing in it, whether you're coaching, whether you're wrapping ankles, whether you're marketing, sports is big business. So I push all three of my kids to stay with sports in some kind of way because it, it's done so much to me that, you know, I, I push them in that direction. So that's that's pretty much what's next. I mean, staying close to the game, whether it be coaching, you know, I, I may get back into some coach. I've coached in high school. I've coached in college basketball. I kind of scale that back just to work with my kids a little bit more, but I might get back into that. This gym thing is really important to me now. Um, trying to get that off the ground. Um, so that's that's where I'm at with it now. And, um, you know, like I said, I might look to do um, some more coaching and, and, and um, maybe some training on the side of, a, you know, just staying close to the game, man. Staying close to these kids. And, you know, that's, that's what I'm passionate about. Well, well, Chuck, I appreciate you uh, taking the time, man, to, to come on the show, man, to, to talk to us about your career. Um, everybody, please make sure you check out Carlisle Complete 7. It's in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Do you guys have a social media um, handle you want to give out? Yes. Um, hold on. Yeah, hey, we're, we're on all three all the big three on IG, Twitter, um, Facebook, just, you know, just punch in Carlisle's Complete 7. And, or, you know, we have a main website too. You can you can um, go there, book a reservation uh, for a preliminary assessment. And, um, you know, this is pretty easy to get through. And um, like I said, where we're located in the factory up in Lake Forest, you got you know, you got another A, you got another gym there, you got ice hockey, you got um, another AU program. So, you know, it's the hotbed of what's going on in Wake Forest. You know, everybody kind of knows where the factory is around there. So, yeah. you know, just drop in and, you know, come see us. Again, man, I, I appreciate you you stopping by. Real quick, I want to give a, a shout out to uh, Oshawa Benjamin, uh, Jamie Knox, and also uh, Rhonda Marie uh, Forever Golden Films. Um, I appreciate you guys, Chuck. It was a pleasure, man. Hopefully, I can absolutely. Get you, hopefully, I can get you back on the show again, and we can, you know, we can talk some some other business. But until then, yeah. man, you know, much success. And I'll, and I'll definitely be up to see you guys at uh, Carlisle Complete 7. Yeah, come on by, man. All right, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chuck yep, Cornegie, Sports it. Talk with Player Agent 3.